I'm equally surprised every year that it's coming so much people. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in the Ericsson Hall. Thank you for being partners, customers, or employees, because you're some of you here as well. It's fantastic to be here, to uh, see Ericsson coming together with all our partners and uh, friends from all around the world, and we can see how we're evolving as a company together with you. And of course, we are moving into the network society. We have talked about that now for the last five years. That anything that benefits from being connected will be connected. And I guess we see it all around in our industries. It's just an amazing transformation that we have in front of us. Think about only last year, 2014. I stood there one year ago. And we have added more than a billion mobile broadband subscriptions. We have 2.9 billion mobile subscriptions in the world right now. The video traffic in the mobile networks grew with 75% in 2014. It's just amazing. Ericsson is working in many new fields. I mean, last year, we didn't have a business unit that was called IPN Cloud. Of course, we have gone into cloud in one way to virtualize our product and, of course, delivering new services and efficiency. And of course, we also see that we are moving into 2020. And you know our predictions for 2020, they are pretty staggering. I mean, we believe it's going to be eight and a half billion mobile broadband subscriptions by 2020. That's almost three times as many people on this earth will have access to internet. And our estimation is that 90% of the earth population above six years old will have a mobile phone. That's what we are building together all around the world with the, the full eco ecosystem from providers to vendors to operators and handset manufacturers and, and ships and manufacturers. It's just a tremendous industry. As I said so many times before, this will change people, businesses, and the society. And we are about to go into how this will change businesses. I mean, we have seen many industries being changed, but media is one of the first ones that the networks that many of you here are providing actually are changing. We see the Netflix of the world coming into the networks. We had the World Championship in soccer last year, if you might remember. And some might come from Germany and even more happier for that. Because Germany won. And uh, that was the ne networked event since, uh, uh, since ever. Because no, so much information that was shared during that event we have never seen before. So we see media is one of the areas that was very early out to be transformed. And what is important then for the networks? Of course, the network is just essential for de delivering that transformation. Moving the traditional TV to actually mo moving into phones or smartphones or, or iPads or tablets. That's what we are doing together with you all around the world every day. We see no, new logics, new logics changing the industry. We go from uh, one way of working to another way of working. I usually say it's three things why industries are transforming. Business models, customer intimacy, and efficiency. Think about the music industry, think about the transport industry. They find new ways of delivering services, much more efficient. They find new business models, how to deliver services. And finally, they can have a custom intimacy that they have never had before. Before, during, and after, they are having a, a sort of a custom intimacy. All that is because of the three forces that we talked about so many years. Mobility, broadband, and the cloud. That can transform basically any industry. And we see so many examples of industries that are changing logics. Maybe we see education going to learning. We see uh, the healthcare industry going to wellness. All of them are using mobility, broadband, and cloud in order to get there. We already now have 500 million mobile money users in the world. 500 million that are using mobile money instead of a bank account. Tremendous change. We're changing industries. The whole thing is the mobility, broadband, and the cloud that is transforming that. There are many sectors that are coming in in the transformation. You see them all around here. Let me focus on two of them, just to understand what type of potential we can unleash with the ICT and the telecoms. Starting with the, the transformation of the transport industry. 
The transport industry is, of course, getting connected. That's great to have a connected car or a connected truck. But even more important is, of course, what can you do when you connect all those cars? What can you avoid? How can you improve life? It's 1.2 million people, for example, that dies every year in car accidents. Just by connecting the car to a transport system that can alert and give, give safety uh, alerts will, of course, reduce that dramatically. More important, the traffic jams are just giving a lot of CO2 emissions. If we can just steer the traffic by connecting them with the mobility, the broadband and the cloud, they can, of course, also being able to reduce that. That's one industry that can be totally transformed. And it's not only about now connecting the device, it's connecting the devices to a system. And when you do that, then you can unleash the whole. Think about Tesla, for example. You saw Elon Musk here. So he's delivering all the software into the car during night times. He can deliver a dashboard to the, to, the, to the car during the night time. You come into the car, you have a new dashboard. Of course, he's using the technology of the wireless network. When it's free, then they download the software. And I've talked so many years about this horsepower prepaid model. It will come. We're going to see the prepaid model on, on, on horsepower. You buy your horsepower 24 hours, and then you sort of hand it back. You don't need it. You're going to be in a more, more urban area. So that's one area. Another area, which of course is healthcare. The potential of healthcare is enormous. Remote medicine, diagnostics, and all things you can do with the mobility broadband and the cloud. You're going to raise the quality, the efficiency, and expand the services in healthcare. Those are two areas that we have researched the last couple of years. What is the embedded uh, sort of hidden value by using ICT? The number is 14 billion US dollars. Trillion US dollars. Billion, trillion is, you know, big difference. <laughs> it is a big difference. 14 trillion US dollars is actually the value of only these two sectors when it comes to how much hidden value it is by using ICT. And the great thing is that the mobility broadband and the cloud is what's really enabling it. Of course you need services, you need content and all of that, but the enablers are coming from this industry which we are creating together. The 14 trillion US dollars is roughly 15% of the global economy, the global GDP. And if you combine all industries that can use ICT, of course, we're talking about $75 trillion. But we need to understand we're entering in a phase we have never seen before, where we can unleash values. We have passed the inflection point in the, in the fifth technology revolution. The data that's going to transform a lot of our society. And of course, the technology we have today is very important and we give a lot of that. But there are also coming new technologies, and as a technology company, you need to talk about 5G. So what will 5G do? A lot of new requirements. I mean, 100 times faster speeds, 1,000 times more data volumes. Uh, of course, we're going to have 10 times better uh, battery life. We're going to have 100 to 1,000 more connected devices. We just need to cater for the data loads will come and the industries that will use uh, the technology we're coming out with. And we see in front of us different use cases in the future where you're going to unleash a lot of efficiency. Think about the low latency for a car to be auto-steered. Think about the sensor in the rural uh, uh, Brazil that uh, only can be woken up every, every three months because it's, it's on battery. We need to send a very, very uh, low-powered signal so you don't need to change the battery more than every tenth year. Those type of things we need to create in this industry with the 5G. But still, you can buy 4G for a long time. Don't worry. But as a company, we need to think about the use cases when industries are getting transformed and actually start using that. And one partner that we talk a lot to when it comes to transforming and going into 5G and what are the requirements is a company that is a world leader in heavy trucks and buses. And the name of the company is Scania. And uh, we have actually invited the CEO and president from Scania, Martin, coming up on stage. Please, Martin, come. So Martin, 
He's the CEO and president of Scania, and we are extremely happy to have him here. He's a very demanding 5G customer. But the more important, you have already started this mm. journey with connectivity. Yeah. Tell me where you are with the connectivity on all your trucks and what's happening. Actually, to get started with that, you can say that uh, already 2000, we created a company that was called Scania Infotronics, and then we were really focusing on what you can do in infotainment and what you can do with uh, getting things connected between the driver and, and, and uh, the home, etc. But suddenly we realized, are we really good at that? Or should we go back to basic and, and work with uh, what is uh, our core business? So in 2010, we decided to uh, get standardized on connectivity for all our trucks. And in 2011, we rolled out that uh, country by country, securing then the two in the M2M. I've learned all the vocabulary for this event. And really, today we are 110,000 connected trucks. We are adding approximately five to 6,000 trucks and buses and engines uh, every month. Uh, and uh, we have a very steep curve on that. And uh, the reason, of course, is that uh, by connectivity and that you have linkage uh, to the vehicles, you can get a lot of things done. So with these 110,000 connected, mm. has that changed your business models, how you work? I mean, now you have connectivity with the drivers or the owners of the, or, of the trucks. You can how say has it changed you? What is changing is really that we are, as you said, is moving from transport into mobility and life cycle solutions with our customers. And thereby, we are looking at different uh, flows of uh, the connectivity. I mean, in-vehicle solutions like uh, um, uh, I mean, like uh, the, uh, the driver uh, connectivity when it comes to topography, GPS, uh, autonomous driving, etc. But also when it comes to uh, between vehicle and uh, the customer in itself, CO2 footprint, uh, environmental reports to their customers, retail business is very keen on that. Uh, maintenance and service planning to the Scania system, financing, insurance, so you are not actually getting uh, paid by, uh, because you have a bad neighbor not <laughs> using uh, the vehicle in the right way, you should not pay the same amount of insurance, uh, rental as I was into. But also what we see is that we can use a lot of this data to sell that to other parties as well, because logistics, of course, is one of the most important flows in the system. Mm. And thereby, investment bankers, for example, they know that one of the most early indicators are just-in-time systems, for example, what is the industry activity, and we will sell them for the same small fee as they are selling their services to us. So I think that would be a pretty good business model, actually. <laughs> so I talked a little bit that you go from connected sort of vehicles or transport, then you go to the next step, which is intelligent transport system. You connect all of that. Yes. I know that you are doing research on that, and of course we are eager to understand what does it mean for us and what does it mean for you, the internal transport systems. What is happening is actually, as I said, we have uh, the connection between the vehicle and different stakeholders, and already there you have a lot of value to drive. Mm. But then of course you're coming into the bigger scope for society, and uh, there are some of our uh, transport modes where it's more simple to do it. Yeah. I think that we will listen more to mining activities, for example, where we can already today drive autonomous trucks. Uh, we can have that in remote areas. You have seen some examples here also with yep. another Swedish uh, uh -huh. company. Uh, and uh, which I think is good. We should drive this okay. together. Thank you. But of course also you will see that more and more in public roads. What we are already doing today is that we are driving these type of you can say electronic bars between uh, the different uh, trucks, platooning. We are doing that between Sweden and the Netherlands today. We have still drivers in the trucks. We have to have that from legal uh, requirements, but we are using the functionality of platooning, and thereby we can decrease distances, we can improve fuel consumption, that is the biggest cost base for our customers, taking down CO2, and decrease, as you say, congestion, yeah. because urbanization horns. That's happening. Happen. That's happening, <laughs> and it will to continue know. to happen. So, I mean, uh, logistics is, I think, one of the biggest yeah. benefits, and since we are into B2B, uh, it's for real for our customers, it's production equipment. So, when you think 5G, you think the ICT sectors, what are the demands on guys like us and the carriers in the room that uh, is giving you the connectivity? You cannot ask for anything, but what would be the big demand do you think about the, in the future? I will ask you a lot of things <laughs> later on tonight in the morning. <laughs> but I have to say like this, uh, we are talking a lot about the perfect solutions. 
in the flow. You are talking about 14, not billion, but trillion, trillion US thank dollars. You, thank you. And often we are obsessed about the perfect solution. I think what we need really to do is connect the technical solution with the business models and to get started. And one of the tricks here is really to work in the flow, in the value chain, not at least in logistics where you have a lot of different stakeholders. How can you connect each other, build transparency in the business model and to gain all uh, the benefits you're talking yeah. about? Because the world is organized in silos. Companies are organized in silos, uh -huh. society is organized in silos, okay. but to, to, to unleash the potential you're talking about, you we must them. create business model where different stakeholders will benefit together. <laughs> and I think that is something that we need to work together yeah. on to show step by step what can we do if we connect a transporter, you guys, yeah. us, yeah. Uh, the public authorities, what data should be public, what should not be shared, what is in, the, and then we can unleash much more already today. Uh, we see that our service business is growing two to, try, uh, two to three times faster than the hardware business. Mm -hmm. And I Good think you, you recognize that from your side as well. Yeah, sometimes so, so, happens. So, so uh, th that is one thing. And uh, we are going into an initiative together now, yeah. Integrated Transport Research Laboratory, yes. which will be in reality. We will take that railway you have here yeah. into the real world. It might be railway, it might be trucks and buses, Nevertheless, show what we can do together and then we will succeed. I think it's very interesting to hear what you're saying because we are entering a world where it's going to be more than two partners. I mean, we as a vendor has worked with all the carriers in this room to provide a lot of services to consumers. If we go into the transport, it's going to be, of course, uh, truck companies like Scania. And then, of course, you need road authorities and other things. So it, it's going to be a little bit different. We need to work in another way. Absolutely. But I think just... Uh, to say something about that, we are always talking about this as it was something tomorrow. Yeah, it's I mean, it's here. Yeah. It's here and now. We have 110,000 connected trucks. And a lot of you can say, OK, I want to have that data. And let's discuss that so we can get started now. It's not tomorrow. It's not the day after. It's here and now. And we will grow that with more than 100,000 trucks every year. Yeah. And there are so many data that we can use. And the funny thing is that people are obsessed about collecting data. But there are two small steps more, analysis and action. And that I don't think we are discussing enough when it comes to the business model. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Good hand for Martin Lundstedt, CEO and President of Scania. It's good to hear what the other side is saying as well when you try to tell theoretically what will happen. We heard practically what we should do. We're very amazed by that. Uh, let me take you to a next step and talk a little bit how we are evolving as a company. And it's a one simple reason why we are evolving and changing. We want to be relevant for you customers in this room. You have so many choices. You're moving into so many new areas. We need to evolve to be relevant for you. And you hopefully have seen how much we have done the last couple of years to be relevant. And uh, I am actually inviting the Chief Marketing Officer of Ericsson, Helena Norman, to talk a little bit about the launches we have done here in order to be relevant to you as a customer. So Helena, please tell us what we have in front of us here. A Thank big hand for Helena! What a welcome and what a group. So I'm going to do this at warp speed. So I'm going to take you through the 10 biggest news that we have at this hall as a little guide so you know what to go see in case you haven't already seen it. And now we use the same model as Hans showed. And we will start from the network evolution layer. And then we will go back a little bit in time to CES, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in January. We launched license-assisted access about combining licensed and unlicensed band to create higher peak rates for indoor smartphone usage. This was an industry first announcement. It will be included into our small sales portfolio uh, that you see over there in the blue area. That's one part on the road to 5G. And a more important step on the road to 5G is the launch of the Ericsson radio system. That's the main thing that you see over there on the blue area. Uh, this is the biggest news in radio since the launch of uh, the RBS 6000 multi standard radio in 2008. It's a transformative, completely new way of building radio networks. It's modular, it's flexible, and it allows you to add capacity quickly and easily. It's lighter, the units are lighter, uh, they're smaller, and they're super quick to install. The baseband is the most powerful ever. We're talking extreme computing here. 
And uh, it's, the most cost, it's the most energy efficient product in the market. If you combine all of this, you get a total cost of ownership that is 20% lower than it is now. And then adding to this family, uh, the last part of it is the router 6000 series that integrates the IP backhaul into the radio network. But it's not only hardware, it's also software, of course. And we have the latest networks-wide software launch. It's called 15B. Two of the features, it has a lot of features, obviously, uh, is that it has a virtual router and it has uh, improvements for app coverage integrated into it. Then we have the services part, because network performance is not only about hardware and software, it's also about services. And we know from our research that five apps in each country, not the same apps, but in each country there are five apps that represent two-thirds of all the mobile app traffic in that country. So we work together with companies like Facebook and Exalaxiata in Indonesia to create the app exper experience optimization service that allows you to, uh, to uh, improve time to content in an app with up to 70%. So then we move from the network layer to the IT transformation. And in the hall, then, that would be in that direction. There is an uh, orange section there. And there you see a circle. That's the digital telco transformation. That's a toolbox that enables operators to become truly digital companies, both in operations and in customer interfaces. Uh, this is a consulting and systems integration approach that is also leveraging our strength in OSS and BSS. One part of this toolbox is our Expert Analytics 15.0. This is an industry first launch as well. It, is, um, it predicts user satisfaction and allows the operator to take automated action, uh, both on the network side and on the marketing side. And this will then improve net promoter score in the network. And then, last but definitely not least, innovation and revenue growth. And I will be talking here about three of the main trends that we see here at Mobile World Congress, starting with cloud. Everyone's talking about cloud. But there are concerns about security and governance. So therefore, yesterday on this stage, we introduced hyperscale capabilities to the Ericsson cloud system, software and hardware that ensures a secure cloud experience. We also introduced the new HDS, 8000 data center system, the first product in the market that carries Intel's rack scale architecture. So that's cloud, one trend. The second big trend is video. Video is half the network, the traffic in the networks, and it's increasing. If you go down to the green part here, you will see our TV and media session section. And you can see the latest software release of the media delivery network that allows operators to take a very powerful and central position in the media delivery chain. And then, last but definitely not least, coming back to what Hans talked about, about Internet of Things, about connecting not only devices but entire systems, we also here launched yesterday the Connected Traffic Cloud. This builds on our Connected Vehicle Cloud solution that we just picked up a very nice award for down at the GSMA. Uh, but this takes it a step further. This goes from connecting the cars to connecting the entire traffic system that then allows you to also look at addressing things like road safety and traffic management. And that was 10 launches in, I believe, approximately five minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Helena. Uh, now you understand why the chief marketing officer was presenting that and not me. That was very efficient. Fantastic, Helena. We're extremely proud of the new launches that we're doing that is really supporting how we evolve as a company uh, and how we can support you. And many of these things are, of course, going into the digital telco in the future where many of US carriers are going. Uh, so we are, of course, investing. We're continuing to invest. We're long term, as you know. We want to build systems end to end, and everything is coming together. We are spending some 5 billion US dollars a year in research and development to see that we really can do this. And that's the highest in the industry. We're really proud of that. Hopefully, you're feeling that we are moving in the right direction. But we also have an enormously large service crew of service engineers in 180 countries. Everything from consultancy, system integration, managed services, rollout, expertise all around the world. That is our 
sort of investment to see that we understand where the world's going. But as we're moving, that's not enough. We need to work in another way in many areas in order to see that we understand. One thing that we're doing, we're also working a lot with innovation. One innovation that Ericsson Research and our business unit has started is called the Ericsson Garage. It's basically innovation, incubator, we bring in students, and we really try to do new things and understanding how the networks will be used in the, in the future. We have that in Stockholm right now. We're going to deploy this Ericsson Garage in more places all around the world the next uh, 12 months that is coming. The first uh, event that we had, or the Ericsson Garage in Stockholm, they had a lot of new innovation. This is one of them. It's called Streamer. Streamer uh, was an innovation done in only six weeks, or actually seven weeks, of the students, together with Universal Music. It's a totally new way how we can go to a concert. Think about that you all have the Streamer app here, and you could actually you can film yourself, and we will have a big screen behind here, and you will be producing up on the big screen here. Fantastic for big events, and I guess if you want to see yourself on a screen, it's a great app. Huh? Not sure that everybody wants to be on the big screen, but it's a great for a youngster at least. Maybe you're in the wrong group here, but usually people cheers when I talk about this fantastic app. <laughs> hey! Uh, so that's one way of working differently, but I also need to go to a more serious note how we need to evolve. We, can, we need, don't need only to evolve with our offerings and solutions in areas we US customers are going. But we have a very moving uh, landscape uh, of customers. I usually say this, and maybe it can be a little bit uh, 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 too uh, transparent, but I think that it was a time when there was a vendor strength. We built a network, we gave out the financing, and operators made a fantastic job, but it was really vendor strength. That was before I was the CEO, long before. <laughs> okay, you should know. We have now been in an in a era where operators, carriers in this room, has done a fantastic job deploying networks all around the world, and of course, gained a lot of strength in the balance between us. However, as we now are addressing all these new opportunities, it's coming a phase where we need to change and work differently with you as customers, because we need to unleash values. We need to have all the right assets from both companies to succeed in many of these new areas. That's why we talk about the next era, today to 2020 and beyond, where we as a company need to work differently to really earn your business, not only having the right solutions. And I see it in three ways. One way is, of course, in that network uh, and, and infrastructure. Here we have a model that has been working for many years. Of course, we're going to develop that and work more closely, develop improving performance on the network. That is fairly traditional still, and I think it will continue so. Then our when you go into this, what we call ITM platform transformation, it's a totally new way for us to work in together. We come from telecoms with an IT background, and we want to do this in a really good way. We need to collaborate in a totally new way. And then you come to innovation and new services and service growth. Here we need to find even more advanced models, models that sharing R&D resources, uh, proof of concepts to see that we can do it, to unleash values if it's for an industry or for a new service. And that's something that I want to instill in the Ericsson organization that we're not only changing the solutions, we also need to work in different way with US partners when we go into these new areas. Because it's a new era and a new world for all of us to succeed. And that, of course, is to create an ecosystem and to succeed with that. I actually brought one customer that we worked a lot of with innovation and actually for several years worked with many new projects of innovation, etc. And that's Telstra. And I have invited the CEO, uh, Chief Executive Officer from Telstra, David Tudy, to join me on the stage and talk a little bit about what we and how we're working. David, please come up. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey. G'day, mate. Yeah, How are mate, you? mate. Nice to see yeah. you. Uh, he's Australian if you didn't understand that. <laughs> uh, David, uh, we have a long relationship as companies. We do, we do. Uh, yeah. You are evolving a lot as a company as well and changing and taking a new role. I mean, yeah. you're not a traditional operator anymore. Uh, how, what, how, what is driving you from a strategic viewpoint? Where do you want to move as a company right. given where you are right now? 
Yeah, well, it's interesting. Well, I'm not going to become a trucking company. Let me quickly say, <laughs> no, I thought Martin was great, by the way. Uh, no, look, what we're seeing, we, we share your vision, Hans. Uh, the, I think we're right at the, at the cusp or in the centre of an incredible change around digital enablement. And I think we sometimes forget it. I mean, the telecommunications industry is the enabler. Yeah. And I see such wonderful opportunities, you know, societal, uh, personal living, uh, I see it across every business sector. Yeah. I mean, who would have believed a truck that just about drives itself? I mean, it is just amazing, but we are limited only by our imagination. Yeah. And when you talk about the opportunity, I get excited. I feel good. <laughs> and I think this industry has got a long way to go. Yeah. And uh, so, look, what, what does an operator like Telstra do? I mean, we, we're in Australia. It's a, I think it's a bigger than Western Europe, isn't it, in land yeah. mass? In so. land mass, it's But we only have 23 million people, but we're, we're a lovely country. <laughs> Uh, but look, what we try to do, and I think you talked about it and Helena talked about it, you've got to be focused on what the new market needs are. You've got to put yourself at risk. Mm. So a lot of the time we spend really trying to understand what the trends are. And then secondly, we believe in growth. If you're not growing, if you're not growing your customer base, yeah. if you're not really pushing out yeah. there, then you're not going to win. And that's why we need a partner like Ericsson. That's why we've always been at the forefront of technology. We, we've adopted new technology faster than many other operators around the world, and we put ourselves at risk, and that's really important. And then the last area is we keep on going to adjacencies, a bit like yep. you, uh, because we've got to, I, mean, I look, digital media, cloud. For us, it is about geographic expansion. It's about the new age of digital media, and we see enormous entertainment, video content exploding. Uh, but also, we are trying to get into how to change health information systems, how to enable new industries. And you do that, it's great. But there's one thing I wanted to say, uh, Hans. You've got to keep reinventing yourself. Yeah. You can't stand still, no, can you? This is moving so yeah. fast. And, yeah. and you're absolutely right. I mean, the opportunities are, are there with challenges, but opportunities. Yeah. If you think about that, then and looking at my theoretical model, but for yeah. us, it's important. Yeah, got that one. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Oh, good. Uh, how do you see strategic partnership going forward with companies like you? I mean, we have done yeah. a lot of innovation together. How, how do you see this going forward? Well, it, it really comes back to what you talked about, this network society. You see, the, the reality of any of us, you can't do it by yourself. Aye. I wish I could. Uh, I mean, I wish there was a day that I, as a CEO, could say, do this, but they never do it anymore, you know, <laughs> because information flow is different. The speed of markets changing are different. So you've got to find a different model, mm. and you've got to keep innovating, and you've got to keep finding ways that push you forward. So for us, uh, you know, we, we look at an ecosystem of, of partners who can come and work with us. Sometimes it's one partner, sometimes it's multiple yeah. partners, but you've got to have a shared vision. Yeah. You've got to have something that keeps you together that you go and create something new, because without creation, you know, we, 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 life's not fun, you know, so <laughs> you've got to keep going. When you think about the projects we have done, uh, we have done several projects together over yeah, many years. Yeah. When you think about the most recent, what, what partnership do you see that we have worked differently or, or yeah. added some value in w w new ways of working? Yeah, well, I'll talk about that, but there's a couple of things I wanted to say, Han, about partnership. Um, see, when we, when we look to partner, and obviously we do a lot of business with suppliers, the first thing we look for is not actually all the technology. We come back to technology. We look for shared values. Yeah. You see, we pride ourselves on being a values-led company. I mean, we do business to make a difference, mm. not just for profit. We, we like profit, <laughs> and we like market cap growth, but we look for shared values. And then secondly, we look for capability. Then yeah. That's when we look for where people are going to be there through the hard times, and they're going to be really bring you know, real differentiation. So I see your R&D number up there. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Because I know you're building for the future, yeah. right? And yeah. that's really great. And then the third area is innovation. And we've done a lot of things together. And what you're looking for is someone who's going to challenge you. I don't want you to tell me I'm good. I, quite honestly, I want to tell you what, what you, i got to do differently, how I can be different. Uh, and that's what a yeah. good partnership's about. Yeah. So when we've done all that work on, you know, we rolled out LT1800. We're world first, right? Yeah. And only because we were with Ericsson. Then yep. we did the uh, Lanes project, which is this emergency services. Yes. I think we got an award just the other day, yep. which is great, which yep. is a great partnership. And that's about using LTE for emergency services networks. Because remember, emergency services have always been different. And then uh, 
for us in Australia, you know, small cells have been very important, but it's all those areas that mm. make a difference. So what do we had? 14 world firsts? Is that I what we I think we have 14 or 17 world firsts yeah, uh, in the right. last couple of years. Yeah, amazing. Uh, so yeah. we pride ourselves on that because we don't want to be in the back seat. We want to be driving in the front seat, and yeah. it's more fun there. Uh, see, I like trucks too much. I've got a problem <laughs> with them, I think. You know. Anyway. And if we look forward, I mean, uh, is there anything more you want to think how we can extend markets? Yeah. Uh, market share together I and mean, collaboration. And for me, it's so important to have this conversation. I'm going to have it with all customers around the world. How can we work differently to create more yeah. value together? Because yeah. there's no competition in between us. I guess everybody else is around us. You're competing right. with us. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, I think there's a lot we need to do. And, and I, I'm of the, of the belief that you've got to create the future, don't you? I mean, that, that's what really differentiates you know, the, the follower from the, the visionary. If yeah. you create the future, because people are waiting for solutions. Yeah. And that's what we love about Ericsson. Yeah. Okay, because thanks. you're willing to put yourself out there. And so creation of the future is what we look for. So to do that, you've got to take risks, you've got to collaborate. Yeah. And you've, when you innovate, you've got to be willing to put money out there. And so this is a little bit about shared risk and shared yeah. reward. And we're feeling our way, right? We don't quite know where no. we're going to go, but, uh, but that's what makes it exciting. But I've got to say, Hans, and I, and I don't um, say it lightly, I mean, the partnership we're forged, because we're tough on you. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we want a good deal, <laughs> uh, you know, we, but we want value, not price. No. Let me be very clear, we want value. We want something that is going to be, give long-term value to our customers, and that's what makes a difference. And if you have a good partner, then you can change the world. And we need more people who want to stand up and do it. And I, even though you play handball and we play Australian rules, he's OK <laughs> for, you know, for a Swede, that is. For a know. Swede, I'm OK. <laughs> <laughs> David Thudy, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much, my friend. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, so let me just finish it up with a couple of things that I think about. I think about a lot of things, but uh, if I think about next year, so what will happen? Next year, or 2015, that's not next year, this year, we will have more people watch stream, we, stream TV than looking at traditional TV. Think about just five years ago, how fast this is going. That's, of course, why we are investing in TV and media. We think that is one of the biggest opportunities there is. Half of the video will be generated from, uh, from mobile traffic. In the mobile traffic will be video. That's going to be enormous a lot. From the few years where now have 50% of everything being video in the mobile networks. We're going to have 80% growth in 4G subscription. More than 800 million people will have 4G. I bet it's going to be 1 billion. 1 billion 4G subscribers by end of 2015. It's just a staggering number. And 70% of the Earth's population will have mobile broadband coverage. That's what we have created together in this industry, and it's just amazing. And we have five years left, and then we're actually going to have 85 to 90% of the Earth's population covered mobile broadband. And that's what you are doing as carriers, and that's just fantastic. And that's going to transform people, business, and society. So I just want to end by thanking you all for being partners, customers, employees of Ericsson. We're on a journey to transform, to be part of your journey in the network society. We appreciate all your business. We want both to have new solutions that you need in a transformation, but we also want to work in a different way. I hope you're enjoying what you see in the Ericsson Hall. I hope our great employees are taking good care of you. And I thank you so very much for coming tonight. And I can tell you right now, the bars are open. <laughs> thank you very much.